Hi everybody, welcome to Vaishayas. This is Pranay and we are going to continue the Tamil Nadu History Textbook Part 1 of Class 11. Before I start the class, I request everybody to please like this video, please share it with your friends and please subscribe if you are new to the channel. And you can reach us on the WhatsApp number provided here for any queries regarding uh, the test series or any sort of courses. We shall start. Chapter number 9 Cultural Development in South India Overview To understand state and society in early medieval South India, to know the nature of political conflict between Chalukyas and Pallavas, to understand the cultural exchanges occurring in South India under two antagonistic kingdoms, to study the artistic greatness of monuments at Ajanta, Elora and Mamalapuram. To study the devotional movements and impressive growth of vernacular literature in early medieval South India. We shall start. Introduction. The political history of South India during 6th century to 9th century CE was marked by conflicts between Chalukyas of Badami, also known as Western Chalukyas, and Pallavas of Kanji. Okay? The Chalukyas of Badami as well as Pallavas of Kanji. At the same time, the period also saw great advancements in the field of culture and literature. It also broke new grounds in areas like devotional literature, art and architecture. The Bhakti movement which impacted the entire subcontinent originated in the Tamil country during the period. Okay? The Bhakti movement originated in the Tamil country. So what are the sources? Inscription on copper plates, on temple vaults and pillars form a major source of historical information for this period. Inscriptions issued by Chalukyas in Kannada, Telugu, Tamil and Sanskrit languages and Pallavas in Tamil and Sanskrit recording land grants to non-royal gifts made to religious establishments are equally important sources. So, the eye hole inscription. The eye hole inscription of Pulakeshin II, composed by his court poet Ravikirti in Sanskrit, is among the most important Chalukyan inscriptions. Okay? You need to remember the eye hole inscription of Pulakeshin II was composed by Ravikirti in Sanskrit. Kavi Raja Marga, a work on poetics in Kannada, Vikram Arjuna Vinayam also called as Pampa Bharata by Pampa in Kannada which were all of a later period and Nannayas Mahabharatam in Telugu also provided useful historical data. Okay? So Kaviraja Marga in, uh, which is a work on poetics in Kannada, Vikramarjuna Vijayam also called as Pampa Bharata by Pampa in Kannada and Nannayas Mahabharatam in Telugu are very important. However, pride of place must go to Tamil literature. The Bhakti movement which originated in South India found its greatest expression in songs composed by the Azavars and Nayanmars. The poems of Vaishnavite Azavars were later compiled in Naliyara Divya Prabandham. The Shaiva literature was canonized as Panniru Tirumurai. The Tevaram composed by Appar, Tirunava, one second, yes, yeah, Tiru, uh, Tirunavakurasar, Savandar, Tiruguna Sambandar, and Sunandarar, and Tiruva Vasagam, Tiruva Vasagam by Manika Vasagar are prominent texts which are read as sacred literature to this day. Periya Puranam written by Sezikar in a later period also provides much historical information. The Mata Vilasa Prahasanam written by Mahindra Varman 1 in Sanskrit is an important source for the Pallava period. These books even still are available in the modern edition. These are available in Amazon which are you know, even uh, converted into English. Many inscriptional sources including the Allahabad pillar inscription of Samudra Gupta 
and the eye hole inscription of the chalukyan king pulakeshin 2 provide details of pallava pallava and chalukya conflict the kuram copper plates of parameshwaram and the velupur velur palayam copper plates of nandivarman 3 record their military achievements coins help us to understand the economic condition of the period okay so the important are allahabad inscriptions of samudragupta i hole inscription of uh, pulakeshin 2 and uh, kuram copper plates of uh, parmeshwarman and uh, velur palayam copper plates of nandivarman and couple of coins buddhist sources such as deepavamsa and mahavamsa written in the pali accounts of chinese travelers hyun sang and itsing gives us details about the socio religious and cultural conditions of the pallava types okay the 9th and 10th century writings of arab travelers and geographers such as sulaiman al masudi ibn hauka also tell us about the social political and economic condition of india at that period the sculptures in the temple in i hole badami patadakal reflect the culture of the types from kuram copper plate this has been extracted from the kuram copper plate and uh, has been converted into english line number 12 says the grandson of narasimha varma who arose from the kings of this race just as the moon and the sun from the eastern mountain who was the crest jewel on the head of those princes who had never bowed their heads before who proved a lion to the elephant herd of hostile kings who appeared to be blessed narasimha himself who had come down to earth in the shape of prince who repeatedly defeated the cholas keralas kalabhras and pandyas who like sahasra bahu a thousand armed kartavirya enjoyed the action for a thousand arms in hundreds of fights who wrote the three syllables of word vijaya victory on the plate on pulakeshin's back which was caused to be visible that is whom he caused to turn his back in the battles of pariyala mani mangala suramara etc and who destroyed the city of vatapi just as the pitcher born agastya the demon vatapi so this was the inscription so we shall start with the chalukyas there are two chalukyan families okay there were two chalukyan families chalukyas of badami or vatapi and chalukyas of kalyani this chapter is regarding the chalukyas of badam okay chalukyan dynasty emerged as a strong power with its founder pulakeshin 1 the founder was pulakeshin 1 around 535 to 566 c fortifying a hill near badam he declared independence from the kadambaras it is said that he conducted yagnas and performed the ashwamedha sacrifice the ashwamedha sacrifice we have Uh, discussed a lot of times in the previous classes the capital badami was founded by kirti varman okay in 566 to 597 c pulakeshin 1 grandson pulakeshin 2 the, the pulakeshin 2 is the grandson of pulakeshin 1 okay after defeating mangalesa proclaimed himself as king an event that he described in the i hole inscription it has been uh, described in the i hole inscription one of the most outstanding victories of pulakeshin 2 was the defeat of harshavardhana's army on the banks of narmada okay the harshavardhana's army was also defeated by pulakeshin 2 the king of malwa kalinga eastern deccan accepted suzerainty his victory over kadambas of banwasi and gangas of talakad that is what we call mysore today are also worthy of note however his attempt to attack kanchipuram was thought by mahendra varma pallava okay he tried to attack kanchipuram but was not successful this led to prolonged war between chalukyas and pallavas 
Narsimhavarman 1 in 632-668. The Pallavaki attacked and occupied Badam. Okay, the Narsimhavarman of the Pallava uh, the Pallava Empire attacked and occupied Badam. Ulakeshin 2 died in the battle. Pallava control over Badami and southern parts of Chalukyan Empire continued for several years. In the mid 8th century, the Badami Chalukyas were overpowered and replaced by the Rashtrakutas. Okay. So, we shall see about the Chalukyan administration. So, what kind of state administration they had? The king was the head of the administration. As usual, in most of the cases, the king is the head of the administration. In dynastic succession, promigenature, that is the first born child, was not strictly formal. Okay? Uh, in most of the cases, the first born child, the male child, the first born male child is considered as the successor. But it was not strictly followed. Generally, the elder was to be appointed as Yuvaraja, the prince, okay, while the king was in the office. The higher apparently got trained in literature, law, philosophy, martial arts and others. Chalukyan kings claimed to rule according to Dharma Shastra and Niti Shastra. Pulakeshin 1 was well versed in Manu Shastra, Puranas and Itihasas. In the beginning, the Chalukyan kings assumed titles such as Maharajan, Satyasrayan, Sri Prithvi Vallabhan. After defeating Harshavardhana, Pulakeshin II assumed the title of Parameshwaran. Bhattarakanand Maharaja Dirajan soon became very popular titles. In the Pallava kingdom, kings took high sounding titles such as Dharma Maharaja Dirajan. Maharaja the Raja, Dharma Maharaja and Maharaja. In Hira Haddagalli plates, the king is introduced as the performer of Agni Stoma, Vajipeya and Ashwamedha sacrifices. These sacrifices have been explained in the chapter, uh, in the Rigvedic chapter. The wild boar was the royal insignia of the Chalukyas. Okay, the wild boar is the royal sign of the Chalukyas. This is the wild boar uh, uh, sign. Okay, found. It was claimed that representing the Varaha avatar of Vishnu, in which he said he has to uh, have rescued the goddess of the earth. You might have seen, you know, the uh, the uh, wild boar on his head. He lifts the uh, earth from water. Okay, so that is what it has been depicted. The bull, Shiva's mount, was the symbol of Pallavas. Okay, the wild boar is of the Chalukyas, and the bull is the symbol of Pallavas. What about the woman? Chalukyan dynasty of Jayasimhan one line appointed royal ladies as provincial governors. They also issued coins in some instances. Vijaya Bhattariya, a Chalukyan prince, issued inscriptions also. Okay? Pallava queens did not take active part in administration, but they built shrines and installed images of various deities and endowed temples. The image of Queen Ranga Pataka, the queen of Rajasimha, is found in the inscription of Kailashana temple in Kanchipuram. So, what they are trying to say in the Chalukyan part, in the Chalukyan dynasty, women, the royal women, were appointed as provincial governors and they issued coins as well as inscriptions also. But in Pallava uh, dynasty, people were not uh, very active in administration, but they were active in building shrines and deities and endowed temples. The king and his ministers. All power were vested in the king. Inscriptions do not specifically speak out of a council of ministers, but they refer to an official called Mahasandhi Vigrahika. Four other categories of ministers are also referred in the epigraphs. 
Pradhana is the head minister. Mahasandhi Vigrahika is the minister of foreign affairs. Amatya is the revenue minister. And Samaharta is the minister of exchequer. Chalukya divided the state into political divisions for the stake of administration. Vishayam, Rastram, Nadu and Grama. Okay, this is the four parts of the state. Epigraph speak of officials like Vishyapati, Samanta, Gramaphohis and Mahatras. Vishyapatis exercised the power at the behest of the kings. Samantas were feudal lords functioning under the control of the state. Grama Pohis and Grama Kudas were village officials. Mahatras were prominent village men. So Vishyapati is the uh, exercise the power of the behest of the king. Okay. Samantas were feudal lords and they were taking uh, functioning under the control of the state. Grama Pohi and Grama Kudas were village officials and Mahatras were prominent village men. Provincial and administrative uh, uh, district administration. Generally, the king appointed his sons as provincial governors. Okay, the sons were mostly the provincial governors, and it's a common practice since the starting. The governor called uh, called themselves Raja, Marakka Rajan, and Raja Ditya Raja Parameshwaran. Some governors held the title Mahasamanta and maintained troops. The chief of Vaishya, Vishya, Vishaya was Vishayapati. Sorry, the chief of Vishaya was Vishayapati. In turn, Vishaya was divided into Pukti. Its head was Pogapati. We shall see village administration. The traditional revenue officials of the village are called as Nalaka Vundas. Okay, Nalaka Vundas. The central figure in village administration was Kamunda or Pokigan, who were appointed by the kings. The village accountant was Karana and he was otherwise called as Gramani. Law and order of the village was in hands of group of people called as Mahajanam. There was a special officer called Mahapurush in charge of maintaining order and peace of the village. Nagarapatis or Purapatis were the officials of the town. Okay, Nagarapatis or Purapatis, which is similar to what we uh, call Nagarpalika and Purapalaka. It's similar to that. Religion. The Chalukyas patronized both Shaivism and Vaishnavism. They built temples for Shiva and Vishnu. Brahmin groups were invited from Gangetic regions and settled to perform regular pujas and conduct festivals and ceremonies in the temples. Notable Chalukyan rulers like Kirti Varman, who was from 566 to 597, Mangalesa, 597 to 609, and Pulakeshin 2, 609 to 642, performed yajnas. Okay, they used to perform yajnas. They bore titles such as Parama Vaishana or Parama Maheshwara. Chalukyas gave prominent place to Kartike, the war of God. The Shaiva monasteries became center for popularizing Shaivism. The Shaiva monasteries. Chalukyas patronized heterodox sects also and lavishly donated lands to the Jain centers. Ravi Kirti, a poet laureate of Pulakeshan II, was a Jain scholar. In the reign of Kirti Varman II, around 744 to 755, a Jain village official built a Jain temple in a place called Annigere. The prince Krishna, around 756 to 775, appointed Gunapatra, a Jain monk, as his master. Pooja Patar, the author of Jainintriya Vyakaranam. Okay, Jainintriya Vyakaranam was a Jain monk, a contemporary of Vijayaditya. According to Hyun Sang, there were many Buddhist centers in the Chalukyan territory, wherein more than 5,000 followers of the Hinayana and Mahayana sect lived. So, what does it say? 
previously in the previous slide we saw they did the pujas okay they were both shaivism and vaishnavism and they used to do yajnas in the next we see they even uh, uh, had a soft corner towards jains as well as buddhists okay the prince krishna appointed a jain monk as his master okay literature and education chalukyas used sanskrit in pillar inscriptions such as i hole and mahakutam a 7th century inscription of chalukyan king at badami mentions kannada as local prakrit kannada as local prakrit meaning the people's language and sanskrit as language of culture a chieftain of pulakeshan too authored a grammar work saptavarman in sanskrit chalukyan architecture historically in deccan chalukyans introduced the technique of building temples using soft sandstones as medium in badami two temples are dedicated to vishnu and one each to shiva and to the jaina tirthankaras the temples are grouped into two excavated cave temples and structural temples badavi is known for both structural and excavated temples patadakal and ihol are popular for structural temples okay so there were two kinds of temples uh, which they made one was the structural temple which they used to construct and the next is excavated temple which they use a huge rock or a hill kind of a thing and they excavate it and make it to a shape so this is uh, one of the temples from badam you can see how intrinsic the uh, carving is and uh, how beautiful it has been designed almost like you know couple of hundreds of years ago we shall come about the i hole which is also called as ayya hole built in 634 i hole the headquarters of the famous medieval Ayavali merchants guild was an important commercial center it was very important commercial center about 70 temples are located in Ayavali the earliest stone built temple is Lord Khan temple its unique red is a stucco pillar with a big capital distinct from the northern style this is the Lord Khan temple this is the bird side view of the lord khan temple you can see how beautifully it has been designed in a square shape the temple dedicated to goddess durga was built on the model of buddha chaitya okay it was uh, built in the model of buddha chaitya <coughs> it stands on a raised platform in form of semicircle another temple dedicated to same goddess is called uchi mallagudi which is rectangular in shape this is the uchi mallagudi temple chalukyas also built jain temples megudi jain temple is illustrative of the evolution of temple architecture under chalukyas the mandapa type caves are preserved at aihol okay this is uchi mallagudi temple you can see uh, the, the lower part is in the rectangular shape but the upper part has you know uh, influence of the north indian uh, temple design let's talk about badami there are four caves in badami the largest cave temple built by mangalesa is dedicated to vishnu so the largest cave temple was built by mangalesa and it is dedicated to vishnu the reclining posture of vishnu on the snake bed and narsimha are exquisite examples of chalukya art irrespective of religion architectural features share a common style it establishes the technical importance and secular attitude of both patron and architecture so this is one of the uh, extract from the badami patadakal patadakal a quiet village in bagalkot district of karnataka is famous for its exquisite temples patadakal was a center for performing royal rituals okay so it was a center for performing royal rituals the virupaksha temple was built at the order of queen 
लोहा महादेवी टू कमरेट द कॉन्फेस्ट ऑफ कांचीपुरम बाय हर हस्बैंड विक्रमादित्य टू द विरूपक्षा टेम्पल दिस विरूपक्षा टेम्पल विच यू सी हियर वॉज बिल्ड ऑन द ऑर्डर ऑफ क्वीन लोह महादेवी the unique feature of the structural temple built by raja simha at mamalapuram was adopted here by the chalukya monuments are generally associated with the rulers who built them however here we also have signatures of architects who conceived the edifice and skilled craft people who created them the east porch of virupaksha temple has a kannada inscription utilizing the architect who designed the temple the architect was given the title tribhuvacharya the maker of three worlds okay tribhuvacharya several reliefs on the temple walls bear signatures of sculptors who carved them at the southeastern corner of the village in papanatha temple similar virupaksha temple in its uh, basic plan it has a shikara in the northern style the outer walls are richly decorated with many panels depicting scenes and characters from the ramayana okay the eastern wall has short kannada inscription giving the name of architect revadi ovajja who designed this shrine in patadakal chalukyas built more than 10 temples which demonstrate the evolution on in chalukyan architecture on the basis of style these temples are classified into two groups indo aryan and dravidian so this is the papanatha temple okay you can see uh, the the lower part it has been uh, you know there is an increase in the height here okay and from there also the uh, the lower part of the temple has been uh, designed in a different way and the upper part has been designed in a north indian way so paintings paintings are found in a cave temple dedicated to vishnu in badami chalukyas adopted the vakataka style in painting many of the paintings are of incarnations of vishnu The most popular Chalukyan painting is in the palace built by King Mangalesan, which is it is a scene of ball being watched by members of royal family and others. In this image, you can see there are people watching something, which is actually a ball. Okay, it is a scene of ball being watched by members of royal family. so this is the map of chalukyan dynasty this was the part in which the chalukyan empire was there okay and uh, you can see the vatapi is here okay and the uh, the right part uh, was the andras and uh, uh, nearby the cholas okay and uh, here the kalinga the odisha okay so it was like you know uh, south of narmada to almost to the north of kaveri 